and comes from, you know, mostly the Jude Judeo-Christian um, dogma and history, his story, speaking yes. of women coming from the bones of a man. When <laughs> what? even scientifically, if you're not, if you're a left brain person that thinks logically, how could that make sense? It makes blood, it makes tissue, and it makes womb energy to bring forth a child. So how could we ever come from bone, the rib, the rib of a man? And also the, the, the history, because you know, we have to be told, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a slick way of telling the truth. Mm -hmm. This is his story, which mm -hmm. is one-sided. It doesn't, it's not fully encompassing. It's almost literally like we're admitting that we rewrote this. Just, yes. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, even the way we pray is in a fetal position. No matter what your religion, tradition, everybody tends to pray like this. And if you look at this, like I said in the uh, Why the Orishas Didn't Save Us from Slavery, what is this? Fellas, I know you know what this is. When, you know, what is that? You're praying you to the womb. When we pray and we prostrate, on the ground with our forehead to the floor, whether it's in Ifa, whether it's Islam, where they um when they pray to Mecca and this or that, they always pray in the fetal position because they don't technically know, they don't consciously know they're praying to the divine mother. Because we when we are in the fetal position, that goes back to that energy of like being in the womb. When we rock, when we're in grief or we're in pain or discomfort. That's going back to that womb energy. Yes. Everything, including the energy of wealth and money on this planet. When you see, when you hear the word current, like the current of a river, it deals with feminine energy, ebbing and flowing. Yes. So with, oh, I have chills now. With that particular energy, we have to learn how to go back to receiving instead of just being combative. Um, because a lot of us think that in order to be equal, to be respected and valued, I have to put my pants on and act like a man. So yeah. I have to go fight for this or that. Whereas there are different ways to do it to where you will get even further without having to fight. Within our divine feminine, the, re the feminine is to receive. And yes. so when we can stand solid and stable and comfortable in the expectation of receiving and, and requiring to be offered to, it's the most natural thing in the world. Ashe. And we have to learn how to be like water once again, yeah. us feminines, no matter what your Risha is or your energy, because all females are not divine feminines. There are some, uh, if you understand the soul, some soul, because if you believe in reincarnation or not, sometimes we mm -hmm. do incarnate as males. We take turns because that's part of us as well. Um, you know, so some women, they're used to incarnating as men a lot in their past life. So their energy is more mm. masculine. It's mm. feminine. And then you have certain groups of women that they're feminine by nature, but they feel like they have to act masculine to get their point across. And that's with, with those who are naturally feminine, you don't have to act like that in order to get what you want. But yet there are those group of women who their soul is more masculine oriented because they're used to incarnating more as a man. So I don't want to leave that out. Um, this is also not feminism. This is speaking of no. where we learn to empower ourselves and be like water. Water is soft, but it's, it can crush just by ebbing and flowing. It can sweep out a whole land or it can give life. When we learn how to go back to our intuitive state and receive, yes. that, is the, that is the true power. Because us trying to force it and be combative, we, we've got more fibroids and uh, people are getting breast cancer, oh. all types of issues because they're trying too hard. And I have the world on my shoulder and this and that. And it's not getting us what we want in our relationships, in our uh, relationships with our children. So there's a need to go back. Because we weren't, they say that we're strong, melanated women, but we've only been strong because we've had to be. Thank you. It's Not a survival mechanism. To. Not because that's what we prefer. Absolutely. We have endured quite a lot of, within our past lives, within our energy, and the weight of the world has been on our shoulder. Two things that have been demonized in history once we went into slavery and bondage and 
the world and kingdoms became third world countries all over the world is when masculine patriarchy came into rule and European patriarchy and, and everything that's black and everything that's a woman is demonized. Eve, Adam and Eve, evil, dark, dark is the night. The woman is the mystery. Whereas the yeah. man is the light. A jobe, woman is oyekun. That's what we call it in Ifa. She is the darkness. Yeah. But that doesn't mean evil. It just means the mysterious, the unknown, like going deep under the water. She is the subconscious mind of God, whereas the male is the conscious mind of God. So Ooh. we attribute all of these things to negativity. So anything that's black, a black cat, a black woman, anything that's bad is the devil. Is yes. evil. Whereas yes. our inverse, if black is evil, then that means white is good. If um if woman is evil, then man is the good thing of life. He is to be honored. He is to be considered Father God. And we yes. talk about Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I talk about on my channel that um, Holy Ghost. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Where's the mother? How did the how could the son be born without its mother? Because it came from uh, patriarchs that did not like women; they were misogynists, and they took that aspect out. They rewrote a man it. Man could be a son of God, and God could be a man, <laughs> but for a woman to bring forth life, she had to be a virgin human. So yes. we weren't good enough to be God. To be God, we had to be human, even though we pushed the whole process out on our yes. own. Now, yeah. keep in mind, I'm not downing men. It's all about balance because I say, if we're the subconscious, the subconscious mind is bigger than the conscious mind. We yes, pretty much is. know that. The earth, we can see that even on the earth, the earth is about three fourths water, 75% water, with the rest being land. So is our body. Yes. Yes, indeed. So um, with that, the smaller percent of the masculine energy, the males, is just as important because you can have a um, a big device. I can have like my iPad, but it could or my phone. That small chip is important because without that chip and that the little bitty tiny chip in the phone, the phone wouldn't work. So I'm not saying that the masculine is not important and should no. be away with it. Because but we have to correct, mm -hmm. right? We have been opposite in the extreme. And so yes. it's time for there to be correction and we need to be able to learn from the mistakes of the past. So can you talk about mm -hmm. where things started? Mm -hmm. Some people in my Patreon group know I've discussed this, but the beginning of the overthrow of the, of the divine feminine, a lot of people don't know that almost all of the fertility goddesses, the goddess was original in every aspect on every single group of people every group of people on earth started mm -hmm. with the goddess and now it's been overthrown so can you talk a little bit about that yes indeed um holy ghost ruach hakodesh feminine energy the holy ghost in the bible it says the holy ghost will be a comforter Men, did you ever see men go, oh, it's all right, babe? No. <laughs> okay. How could the Holy Ghost, how could the Ruach HaKodesh or the Shekinah, how could it be a masculine energy? Yeah. Even in Islam, they will call um, creator Allah, Allahu Akbar. Allah, Allah was a lot, the moon goddess. And they don't want to look at that. They want to see God as being male. A woman should be ashamed of herself. She should cover her face. And, and I'm not knocking anyone's uh, religions or traditions, but I'm just speaking of the historical uh, mechanisms of it to get us to yes. where we are today. The history. And, Let them yes, know. So it's not just about a racial thing. It's about a global thing. Yes. Because as long as the world remains out of balance, we will continue the world will continue to suffer because that's why everyone is suffering right now is because the feminine is not put on her throne. The, um, the, the last, the right? The least right now. We need to, yes. yes, the last shall become first. And so Absolutely. we are on the bottom and it's going to turn. It's happening Absolutely. anyway. Absolutely. Um, I do believe in the principle of honor thy father and mother. If we are the mother, if we are the oldest ancestor, known to mankind if we have incarnated as that and if we are just treated as something that's not important uh if we continue to be i'm not saying like twerking and all this stuff isn't fun or cute but i'm saying if that's all that we're looked at as or we're just looked at as crying mammies or the tragic mammy as the only thing that we that we are rather than something that's worthy of being respected and protected then the world will continue to be out of balance but um, because we're reduced 
right? Yeah. We're not allowed. It's the whole. You're either a whore or or you're a saint. A man. You're yeah. either yeah. We don't get to be our fully encompassed selves yes. in a unified divine feminine because society is only comfortable with us when we are broken down into caricatures. Absolutely. And so yeah, and it's going to be a problem until we fix it. Um, another thing that's coming to me too is we must begin to learn how uh, to create non-judgment of different aspects of femininity uh, when yes. it's in a state of unawareness. Um, a child that's three years old, they may not know they have a medulla, a medulla oblongata, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. So a woman that's not aware of her power, that doesn't make her less powerful. She's just not aware of it, but it's there. It and she can be dangerous. Into. Mm -hmm. And she can be dangerous. Absolutely. When we don't know it, yes. But dangerous in a good way because that is the salvation of what we know as life on earth today. Is yes. that our wellness, our emotional wellness, um, the healing of societies, what we bring forth. Because if we keep incarnating souls to this planet and our wounds are still screaming in travail, what type of souls are we bringing to the earth? Woo! Um... Yes. The child is, is gestating. That we're creating something. Our wounds are the oven. We're creating something and we're bringing forth life. And we must learn to go back to, to tapping into that energy in balance and honoring that womb space. That's what Iyami Oshoronga is all about. It is the mystery of femininity. And if I, the Iyami Oshoronga are the primordial mothers. They are powerful. Uh, they say that the Iyami are even more powerful than Orisha. Yes. So uh, their energy is all encompassing. It is divine chaos, and it must divine be divine chaos. Yes. Mm -hmm. It must be appeased in order for there to be peace on earth. And right now, she's still at an imbalance in the. She's waking up. She's waking up. Yes. You had mentioned that there are, and and I think this goes to what you had said earlier that there are these various aspects of the feminine and, and we are, you know, kind of forced into these boxes. Right. And, and we're learning to integrate and to unify our identity. Speaking about what, in your opinion, is the divine feminine? Because as we said, some women, because we, women encompass both masculine and feminine. Everybody does, but we can give birth to masculine and feminine, obviously. Right. So when we speak about divine feminine, what would be those characteristics and those principles? And what are the responsibilities that come with, with that energy? Absolutely. Um, Divine Feminine speaks of, once again, receptivity, um, intuition, tapping back into, in, into intuition. Because yes. um, learning, once again, to receive receptiveness. Another thing is making pleasure a, a necess as necessary as the water you drink and the air you breathe. Pleasure Say that again. Be a daily thing, whether it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever brings you pleasure, because that's when you're tapping into your right brain, and your creative energy, uh, learning to relax. A lot of us, once again, when we think of intuition, which is moon energy, a lot of times based on our moon signs, etc. cetera, yes. they, they think of the word Luna, which is moon. And you know what they, what they talk about with the Luna, lunatic. So yes. we have to, as we push into the age of Aquarius, we must begin to stop worrying about looking crazy when we're tapping into intuition. That part, if meaning. If they call you a lunatic, so be it. Yes, I'm yes. a person. I'm loony. I'm of the moon. Meaning, especially because I have people say to me all the time, well, how do you read tarot? How do you know what you, because I trust myself. Yes, because I trust absolutely. myself. I know what I'm hearing. I, I'm in touch with that part of myself. And so what we consider sane is very much so aligned with the masculine in that it needs to be tactile. You need to be yes. able to put your hands on it. Right. Yes. And in the, the language of spirit and the language of intuition is our feelings. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us have been cut off from mm -hmm. that. I have so many women that are like, I can't feel anything. I can't mm -hmm. feel anything. Mm -hmm. This is something that they need to understand. It's not a, a, a secondary thing. It's not an afterthought. Your feelings are principle. Mm -hmm. um, another thing about uh, di divine feminine energy is respecting the seasons and cycles of life. Cycle 
everything goes in a circle, respecting the moon periods, uh, the months of the wanting moon, the waxing new moon, full moon, and making themes out of each of those time periods. Timing when you're going to do an event based on the cycles of the moon, based on the cycles of your body, and becoming in rhythm. Yeah. Again, that is when that's that's giving birth to peace on earth. It's yes. tapping back into those things. Also, on top of that, not worried about what people think or calling you a lunatic, but also mental wellness as well. We do have to take care of our sense of logic as well and staying balanced in between divine, um, yes. in between logic and intuition. But sometimes we're too logical to where we second guess or we're too afraid to tap into that intuitive type of energy. Yes. And here yes. I have two cards. I pulled these two out in particular. And yes. if, you look, if you look at it, now usually in the Rider weight, the High Priestess card, which deals a little bit with moon energy and mysteries, she's usually a more brown-skinned woman. Have you ever noticed that? Yes, but, you know, <laughs> we know what that's about. Yes. Have you ever wondered why? Everyone in the audience, I'm sure you know why. <laughs> because this was originally the Sybil. She's dressed like a Sybil. The, uh, the Tell them what the Sybils are. Most people have never heard of them. The high priestess is the Sybil, whereas the Hierophant is the Pope. And this represents intuition. This represents logic, dogma, and tradition. Following the rules. Do what I say. Don't question God. That's the masculine energy. But when these are in balance and in alignment, then there is more, um, more peace on earth. My Absolutely. Is My but when there's too much of this, and this is put to the back burner and discredited, then the world is in an imbalance. It's like a seesaw. It has to be balanced. Because either way, this is powerful. We're fighting so much to be, oh, I want to be equal to this. But why would you want to be equal to this? No, you're thank greater. you. You're greater. You're the subconscious. <laughs> you're, you're the 75%. Why in the world would you want to reduce yourself down to be equal? equal. We must learn to overcome these terms of equality. Everything has its hierarchy in the spirit world, including us, the souls. And everything is not meant to be equal. And that's okay. That's art. Uh, there are certain things that are... Um, there's alignment, there's balance, and there should be respect of all creation and all life, yes. but that doesn't mean yes. everything is meant to be equal. And um, when we do that, it adjusts our expectations because so much of what patriarchy has done has been damaging to both the feminine and the masculine. We expect and we look to our men to be able to do things that are outside of their nature. Mm -hmm. And we are frustrated beyond words because there's an expectation and a desire and a questioning right of I can do this why can't you do this but you're in control why does yes. this happen we need to relieve ourselves of that can you talk a little bit about the symbols please let Definitely. people know what they are it's it's spelled s-y-b-i-l-s -S, you guys yes the symbols were the divine prophetesses on earth um, they were in Libya. They were all over what is known today as North Africa. I really don't make a distinction between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. It's all Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Greece, Turkey, all of those different empires. And they were, they were melanated women. If you look at the movies nowadays, they have them more like modern Greek looking, but even modern Greeks are more olive skinned a lot of times. These yeah. were melanated women known as the black doves. That's where you get the idea of the Holy Ghost from. It, it, the spirit shall ascend like a dove. Woo! On the water. That all yes. comes from those prophetesses. There was, um, they talk about Moses and all of these different prophets. Those were the female prophetesses. I always talk about Sybil and Bible. Bible, Sybil. Those are all um, intricate words that are tied in together. Um, people will ask me, why why are there not that many female gurus that's because a woman is already wisdom a man a guru is seeking wisdom thank you I, I, I was seeking wisdom he's he's traveling towards it but you're already there so there's nothing to seek i so, just i describe it like being um blind in one eye mm -hmm. right like we have two eyes yes. or three really but yes. they're like this so when they become gurus or they become enlightened they can see Yes. But we come here in that. So we're just trying to remember and trying yes. to get back to a connection with it. I'm glad yes. you said that. 
They were known as the Oracle of Delphi. If you look up yes. information about that, um, they spoke of the great flood of a woman by the name of Mama Zobe, a Mami Wata priestess. She has a lot more intricate information on that, which can be found on YouTube. But this is her book here. The first prophetess of Mami Wata, the Sybil, Step of African Prophecy by the Catholic Church. I will write all this down, you guys. Don't worry. I've been trying to get this book myself for a while. Can you see? Hold on one second. Can you see the name? The Theft yes. of African Prophecy by the Catholic Church. Look at what the Pope wears. He wears that, that dagger and that fish hat. They talk about all oh, these marine spirits. They tell demonic and this and that. Why? When everything about Why? The, church, the fish, all of that's marine energy. Marine and water. Yes. Water, intuition, et cetera, et cetera. And so they've totally taken what the prophetesses have gleaned of old and they have changed it into this. So she has totally been plagiarized by this. And once this plagiarization happened, then I always say what goes around comes around because the patriarchs were melanated men too. Yes. You know? So Can we, we got to pop? Mm -hmm. because it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Um, but it's something that in order for us to not make the same mistakes and also for us to understand what we're seeing now, we need to know our history. Mm -hmm. So we were, they were melanated women yes. who were the civils who were in this position of being revealed, having knowledge given to them, access to knowledge. They were overthrown by melanated men. By melanated men. By melanated men. We cannot skip over that because it might be uncomfortable. There's an opportunity for healing when we tell the truth. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's not a, um, a black power thing or a woman power thing or anything like that. It's just history. I mean, we're not speaking of just, oh, this, I just channeled this and I got this. No, this is history. This, <laughs> a lot of this can be proven. If you, if you travel to Europe today and look at those ruins, her temples are still there. They've been decimated. Um, yes. Anything dealing with the feminine principle of uh, the man, the, hin the Hindu yogi Satguru, he talks about how temples were destroyed uh, of the goddess and why she's she has not been celebrated. He does he doesn't mention Africa on his video. That's kind no, of I saw that. And that kind of irritated me, so I really didn't talk about it a lot. But he did admit that yes, there were temples. He said there was more temples of the goddess than it was of the god. Yes, of, uh, the feminine energy. So there's a need to recover that. There's a need to question the Ten Commandments, which were the forty with which is the, the laws of Ma'at, the negative confessions, and what is based on, and distort the lies from the truth. Thou shalt not seek a medium. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. What does all of that mean? Propaganda. You know, that's from the patriarchy. <laughs> Propaganda and lies, yes. Do, do you know that in Italy, people could be burned just for having a book? This was not just in slavery in America. People could be burned for reading. The only people that could read were the, the patriarchs, the, uh, the clergy, the uh, priestly, uh, not, the, not the royal class in those particular people, the mystery school peoples. What's the mystery in the mystery schools? It's all a woman stuff. That's the mystery. That's the, the mystery. dark. It's the darkness. <laughs> Everyone's it's like, the I want to know the secret. Um, it's this. <laughs> Get into it. Get into <laughs> That's it. That's secret right there. Um, even in Ifa, when you greet, uh, I always say, when you greet a Babalawo, you say, Aburu Boye Abo Shishe. Aburu Boye Abo Shishe is greeting the three women that helped Ifa. Ifa is always <laughs> seeking wisdom. It is the women that saved him and protected him. So when you greet an Ifa priest, you are not greeting a Rumila, you are greeting the women. The women. The three women that helped him. Their names was Aburu, Aboye, and Abo Shishe. That is the mystery. That is the mystery of life. <laughs> Let's see. When we accept this, it frees us from so much. It frees us from participating in something that has done nothing but strip us of the truth and perpetuate the kind of life, like you said, this, this world that we don't want. Mm -hmm. So we're able to anchor light and balance when we tell the truth, <clears throat> when we educate ourselves, and when we free ourselves from these standards. So... If me being a lunatic means that I'm actually in touch with my first eye and my 
my spiritual connection and my ancestors because they're they they're showing up in all of us. We're young women, and the draw has been there since I was small. It wasn't something that I could. Fu- I didn't understand what it was, but I knew what was wrong, and I knew what I didn't want. Absolutely. Um, the idea of just a son, a son of God. You all will be sons of God. Never a woman hmm? could partake no. of that. When you talk, when you hear in the Bible, you shall be one of the sons of God, or you shall honor the son of God. What about the daughter of God? The daughter of God is the woman was never ever included in that. Once again. I'm not speaking of feminism. I'm just speaking of a need for balance and restoration of the truth, spirit and in truth. Um, people appealing to Father God, but not appealing to Mother God. We have to start with our language. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that is a, it's a small reminder Right. Because so much of our language and the spelling in English, the way that we spell, we constantly spell ourselves with these limited, very imbalanced perspectives. And so I actively seek to adjust my language. I don't say God, I say goddess Mm -hmm. because goddess. And it's just like with anything else. If you weigh too much, you want to eat less. If you weigh too little, you want to eat a little bit more. We have to be okay with correction. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why we're having this conversation. Ashe. (laughs) And in our relationships, a lot of times um, we will either be the mother or teacher to, you know, husbands and boyfriends and all these people. We do not have to teach or be the doctor for the husbands and boyfriends. That's their mother's job. You're not meant to to be their teacher and their doctor. We are meant to teach the children and those that are called to us. We are meant to teach women. We're meant to empower women and just people, the communities. We teach the the men too, but the men who who are supposed to protect us and be there with us, we don't have to teach them to get their love. We don't have to be their doctor. Put up with the most negative things to get their love. I'm not talking about not enduring certain things with somebody who's good to you. But we have to stop saying, well, if you love me or if you be with me or if you give me this title or this ring, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to just put up with your mother and die for you. No, there's a need to, to set the standard to like, OK, can I can I depend on you as well? Can, can you cover me as well? The woman is the home. The woman is the home. The man is the house. The woman is the warmth inside the house. It's the energy when you enter the room. She sets the atmosphere. She is the mystery of the house. She is the inner subconscious mind of of the creator. To be protected, right? So when we talk about balance, if, because we have been put in a position, you know, where we've had to protect ourselves in the best arrangement, you are honored by your divine masculine and protected from the outside, from attack from the outside, from exposure to the outside, so that you can be in the dark mystery, in your warmth, in the home, mm-hmm. in that in that exchange. And you're yes. not able to do that if you have to mother him. Yes, absolutely. Even with our relationship with people, we will allow people to take, 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 and not replenish anything back. And everything in life is ebb and flow. Even the cre- creatress or the creator made our bodies to where when we put something in, it has to come back out. It comes because out. Because it has, because it was designed to give back to the earth so more food could come out. So yes. when, when we just, when people just eat from us and they don't give it back, then the soil is depleted. The land is depleted. Our lives, our heart is depleted. Then we become bitter. Have you ever seen dried up soil? It's rocky. It's not pliable. It's, that, yes. That's how we become like when we've been depleted. Bitter. When, bitter. Um, also, another thing is, too, I have this water here. This is from my Yemojala 25. When you put water in a bottle or you try to fit it in a box, the feminine energy, what's going to happen to the water? It's going to become stagnant. It's going to stink. It's going to uh, attract all types of amoeba and flies. It's not going to be <laughs> worth drinking. It's going to be putrid. This yeah. must flow. This must flow. We're in the age of Aquarius to where the water is flowing, flowing. from the Calabash. So the information yes. is flowing again. So the Aquarius is an air sign of intuition, not intuition, of logic and all of those Logic types. and thought. Yes, yes, Aquarius and Uranus energy, but it's carrying the water. It's carrying the messages of the divine feminine. It's carrying the messages of intuition. And it's revealing truth. 
The truth speaking, shall be revealed. And that's why now's the time, right? And speaking mm -hmm. to that, let's talk about our wombs. Mm -hmm. It's become very popular to do steams. A mm -hmm. lot of people are talking about just womb health and care from mm -hmm. a very physical perspective, mm -hmm. but also relating that to our chakras being in the root chakra. I'm a Scorpio. Oh, and happy birthday month to you. Happy so birthday. I don't forget. Well, no, this is my birthday month. I'm just a sad rising. <laughs> oh, you're just a sad rising. Oh, I thought you already said I'm a Scorpio. My birthday was last month. So I'm a water <laughs> sign, but you know, fiery water. And um, I've been thinking a lot about the new focus, the return to focus on our wounds mm -hmm. and our root uh, chakras. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you could share with, with, you know, with our folks about that? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to skip past the womb real quick, if you don't mind. No, no problem. Um, one thing, we're, we're doing these yoni things. We're getting our yoni pearls. We're doing our, our, our magic with our menstrual cycle and the moon cycle. But one thing that still needs to be healed, I don't hear people talking about, is this, the heart. Yes. We are walking around with broken hearts. Literally. It might be good. It might be lubricated and healthy and toned and this and that. But the heart. Heart is broken. The woman's heart. A woman's heart. There is a need to collectively heal the collective broken consciousness heart. Heartbroken mothers. Heartbroken grandmothers. Ooh. Heartbroken great grandmothers. Just everybody's heartbroken. The neglect. The, this a, a continuation of a Tyler Perry movie over and over again. So just as much as we need to get our wounds in check through diet, um, the, the timing of what we eat, not necessarily having to be vegan and drink juices all day, but timing when, okay, I'm going to take a break from eating those type of foods. I'm just going to eat this at when the sun is highest in the sky, knowing when to eat, knowing when to rest and knowing when to say no. No is a yes. feminine word. Yes is a positive word. Positive is masculine energy. Feminine is negative energy. When I say negative, I don't mean bad because those are the con connotations put on by the words that men have, have recreated but we have to learn how to say no sometimes we have to say no when to say yes no when to say no say no to say yes 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 and then we're just depleted so yeah start to be comfortable ladies with saying no i'm sorry i can't i'm not saying it in in meanness i'm just i can't do that right now it's okay to say no and, and something say no it's gonna it's vibrate here yeah and something i say a lot is that and, and it, it's it's what I've observed, right? Like you mm -hmm. said, no is super important. If we don't honor our feelings, if we don't honor how we feel, mm -hmm. how can we be mad at other people for not honoring how we feel? Absolutely. If you don't honor your own time and your, your exhaustion, if you're mm -hmm. serving at your table constantly, mm -hmm. no one, and you've taught people that you're going to be on your feet. They don't expect to see you sit down and eat. They don't expect any of that. And then you're upset. Because no one's going to say, hey, I've had my third helping. You should come and sit down. Absolutely. We have to teach people to honor our feelings and our limits and our boundaries because we're doing it for ourselves. So you're right. We have to heal our heart. And it begins with having boundaries and learning to say no. Absolutely. Even, uh, even subtle things such as... Um, giving other people the better slice of cake and then we'll take the more raggedy broken off piece and the broken <laughs> off piece get, get the big nice pretty piece that's what? not broken and crumbled. <laughs> let mama have let mama have her. something good. Yes. <laughs> I'm here for it. So care. Um also a need to not necessarily unify with all women, but finding a tribe of women that can be trusted to unify with. We have got to stop the colorism and the just the combativeness and backstabbing and stuff like that because that, that's a part of the hatred of ourselves because yes. we've been told that the woman is not worthy she's evil this and that and so we treat each other how we feel about ourselves subconsciously internalized um, patriarchy it's absolutely. internalized patriarchy yeah we have to learn to forgive our mothers for the mistakes that they may have made by us when they didn't always do right some people have had great mothers but we have to forgive of uh, any secrets or anything such as that even if the mother was wrong or she didn't validate you know a truth or a story there's a need to look past and go well what did she go through what there's a need to look past it because it's yeah. been something that's been passed on a, a, a yes. legacy of heartache once again and secrets so kind of looking past why she did that to, okay, I'm going to 
you know, I may not fool with her like this, but I kind of understand it more, a little more compassion. For we've been turned problems. against, we've been turned against ourselves, our sisters, our mothers, our, our aunties, we view, we, there's competition. It's yes. really weird. It's, it's yes, very, it's, very uh, it's against, yes. And I didn't, I'm 38 now. I didn't actually get to a place where I realized how deep the mother wound was, how much I desired the understanding and the company um, and the support of other women mm -hmm. um, until I was in my 30s because I realized that that was the wound that needed to be healed. It wasn't about what I could or could not get from a man because we've been yes. oriented to want to get certain things from men and then yes. we're disappointed. And it was like, no, I just need, to improve my sister, my coven, my community. Absolutely. And, and then I'll get the support that I'm seeking and the understanding Absolutely. that I'm seeking. Yes, and then striving, not waiting until we get into our, our mid-40s and 50s to, to uh, start planning for eldership and ancestorhood, but starting now to say, I'm going to be a person that the people, when they come to me, they're going to trust me. But I'm going to make myself worthy of trust. We have so many people in different hierarchies. Oh, I'm an elder. You should respect me. What have you done to get respect? That's what Ooh. I like to ask. So we have to become mothers, sisters, aunts, friends, mentors, teachers that are worthy of respect. That way it's not, you don't have to force, we don't have to force it. It'll just come naturally. Because yes. a lot of times when people are not respecting their elders, it's because their elders have let them down, starting with their mothers and their fathers. And then it tends to tie into their relationships with other people that they meet later on in life. And it's always a, like, a reflection of that mother and father wound. So, and, so, and that makes you feel alone. Yes. Absolutely. When your ancestors or your, your elders who should have been elders didn't step up, it leaves a lot of us feeling alone yes. and closed down. Yes, absolutely. Speaking our truth, yes. learning to speak our truth, um, not necessarily violently, but, you know, this is my truth. And letting that out, letting out that energy. Uh, it is spoken of that any energy that we are dealing with on the right side of our body, which is the masculine side, it's the, the, the giving side. It comes from things that are going on in this life. Any pains or ailments on the left side of your body, the feminine receptive side of your body comes from things from childhood and a past life. So just uh, the, uh, balancing the divine masculine and feminine doesn't have to be... It doesn't have to mean going out having a march and protesting for women to be receptive. It's a matter of balancing the energy within ourselves. Yes. That's the first and foremost. When that energy is in balance, when your left and right side are in balance with one another, then we can go out and we exude that. And then we turn the light on for somebody else by our example. Our life being an example. It's no need for protest. It's no need for combativeness and pushing it. It's just a means of uh, exuding. We don't belong out there exuding the balance between the left and right side of us. That's right. When it starts with you. Yes. It starts with you. It's it's not about what's on the surface. Your energy from the inside is going to come out and it will put you in a frequency to attract what you're actually ready to receive. And if your cup, like you said, if your cup is empty, what yes. do you you don't have anything even to offer and we have to come out. It's killing us. Our yes. wombs are upset. We're having heart attacks. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's killing us. Yep. We must do this for our health. Absolutely. Um, I have a few, let's see, I'm kind of looking at my notes. I wanted to talk about really quick, a low dumari. It means owner of the womb. Even people yes. in African cosmology, they will say, oh, a low dumari, he is God. Like that's, what about the feminine aspect? So once again, owner of a womb. Feminine. Owner of a womb, you mm -hmm. guys. Oh, just. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Lodu. Mm-hmm. Hold on one second. Um, I want to quickly talk about as well menstrual blood. Menstrual blood yes. is not nasty. Menstrual blood is power. Um, menstrual blood is power. Yes. The... Menstrual blood is power. Yes. That's what now, you're baptized in. Go ahead. We refrain from doing ancestral altar work and working with our rishas and wearing our lekes when we are menstruating, if you know, depending on protocol of a different house, how they do things. But that's not because we're nasty, dirty, and condemned. That's because there's power in the blood. You hear Christians say that. You know how the church will say, it will never lose its power. Or I plead the blood. What they're really is they're pleading on the divine feminine. They're pleading on the yeah. menstrual blood. They would rather plead on 
Blood that shed in death than blood that shared to give life. Woo! Wait, wait. I was not ready. I was not ready. Wait. Wait. <laughs> So what she just said, what you just said to me, which like all the bells went off. I'm a preacher's daughter. So like we we focus on Christ's blood, Christ's blood that was shed for us, that was shed for us. We plead the blood and we do not hold in honor or respect the blood that gives us life. The yes. blood shed in death is valued higher than the blood shed in life. If you don't listen. Yes. To bleed those many days and to not pass away. You know, right? And to not the holy blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead my menstrual blood. <laughs> That's the power. It has the Woo! power to cancel out certain things. It has the power to. It has. It has much power to it. Uh, have you heard of Henrietta Lacks? Yes. When they took yes. her ovaries and did certain things, it is the woman's body is a healing mechanism. It is yes. a, a, an orifice. Or a vessel of the Creator on Earth. It is a literally Creator on Earth. Literally, mm -hmm. literally, absolutely. Wow. Now, the Eos are elder women who have passed their time period. It doesn't make them less powerful. It's just the energy goes within at that time. They have the maiden, the mother, and the crone. So we still respect the divine feminine either way, and we don't have to. Um, uh, women don't have to give birth to be that divine feminine. That's only just one aspect of it. It's so much more than giving birth and having a menstrual cycle. It's also um, it's also a matter of once again teaching, educating, using our divine feminine energy, protecting our body, our most important parts of our body, protecting our hearts. Because a yeah. lot of the heartbreak that we go through, if it's not in childhood, if it's in adulthood. It comes from the choices that we make. So we still have to use our logic to make yes. choices to protect our heart. If there's no one else to protect it, we must protect it on our own. It's, it's nothing wrong with guarding yourself without, you know, being too skeptical to where you miss an opportunity. There's a need for balance. Yes. Guarding yourself. And we balance. tend to choose people based on what our yoni wants only versus is this person good for me so there is a need to use logic with that the, the logic is we do not throw away logic with our intuition there's a need for no power. it's a lie that to be truly feminine is to ignore or not be in touch with logic because as i said we encompass all of it it is mm -hmm. just as much it is it is absolutely a feminine function to be logical it is a a function of an imbalance and a function of patriarchy to ignore one side of oneself completely. Absolutely. That's the issue. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Get into Jumbo it. <laughs> Here's a few suggested readings on top of. Oh, she's so <laughs> wonderful. That book is so good. Mama Zobe, Jambalaya by Louisa, Louisa Tesh. Oshun she is a, a Shun, yes, she's an Oshun priestess. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Iyami Oshoronga. This is all about primordial feminine energy. This is by the late ancestor chief. Her name is so long. Chief Ialipa Ialode Fagbemileki Fatumishi. That's her name. I think you can find this on Amazon. This is a very good book. Okay, um, listen, any of you guys that are coming to Costa Rica, I will need you to DM me and let me know if I can send some stuff to your address because I need these books and I can't get them here. So bring me certain things and this will be oh, one wow. of them. Yeah. Okay. You may be able to get some of the information. I don't know if you can get eBooks. She used to have a podcast or something before she passed away, but her, her, her content is very difficult to find now. And the audio is not that great, but if you can listen to it with patience, then it's, it's very worth, you it's know, worth it's very it. lucrative to look at. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm getting tongue tied now. And then <laughs> Oshu Shengeshe, the elegant deity of wealth, power, and femininity. Yes. You Why are a daughter that? of Oshun and uh, Yemeya, correct? Yes. yes, a daughter of both waters. Yes. Oshun, this particular book is important for the fact, and the reason why I didn't bring out the other female Orishas is because she was the first female Irumole on planet Earth. Without her bringing the sweetness to life, there will be we would not be in existence right now. So this respect is the important. mother. 
Yes. Fresh water, right? Nothing on earth lives without fresh, clean water. And also Oshun, even though, you know, so many people are like, oh, Oshun, and she's so pretty. And yeah, but she also has an avatar that is the witch. She's the the queen of the witches. Respect Oshun. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Another thing is to beauty. Surround yourself with beauty. Beautiful things, beautiful glasses to drink out of, not just the paper cups and the paper plates, beautiful plates, beautiful uh, forks with nice designs on, whatever you can do, just the small little things. Just start to surround yourself with more beauty, more pleasure. Friday is a good day for pleasure as the woman. Femininity, you know, making yourself feel good, dressing in something nice, wearing some nice panties, all of that good stuff. And start to incorporate Things that make those you feel things. good. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Drinking your red raspberry leaf tea. Um, kind of cutting down on sugar because I love sugar. <laughs> but um, one thing about sugar is we're often, when we can't get that hug from a mother or grandmother or this and that, we eat the cupcakes and we eat the cookies. So incorporating more monk fruit. Um, uh, they say agave is not as good, so maybe in moderation. Certain sugar-free sweeteners, using the syrup of dates to sweeten your items. You, if you're gonna eat sugar, eat it in moderation because a lot of that's causing tumors and cancer in the body. Yes, yes, because ladies. Because we tend to put a band aid on it by eating those particular type of things. Yes, we do. But there's a need to face whatever it is that's, that we're reaching. For. We've been doing shadow work. I'm yes. gonna send you the links. We did a whole shadow work series on my Patreon. I'm just gonna send it to you. I would love for you to watch it. It's it's we talk about shadow work, but also in particularly from the perspective of our sexual selves, the things that we feel shame about, the things that we don't want to look at in ourselves. And we hold those things in our wounds and in our bodies and it creates disease and illness. So this is really important. Absolutely. And celebrating the different aspects of feminine energy. Another thing. One more thing. I know I keep rambling. No, keep going. I talked earlier about women twerking and things like that. But, you know, sometimes I can get so much into this energy to where I'm not thinking about, oh, you know, all the cute stuff and this and that. We, there's an aspect of Oshun in the Patakis where Oshun was struggling. And Oshun had to end up, I want to be careful of saying too much, she had to end up, end up prostituting herself. Yes. This is both in the Cuban cosmology and the Ifa cosmology. People don't want to talk about that. So what I want to say is, if you want to help women in particular, help little girls and help the prostitutes. The prostitutes of the world represent the women who have been raped, the women who have not had their mother's love, the women who have not had their father's love, and they're in survival mode. They're not in their feminine mode, they're in survival mode. So as we come off of hating ourselves as women, or not liking certain things about ourselves because we were told we were so bad and we, these bleeding evil things, is to have a little more mercy on those who we consider less in society. Yes. Those particular oh, women. Because you would yes. be surprised how sometimes, uh, my mother is a human traffic specialist. I met some of them and they, a lot of them are sweetest women, spiritual gifts and abilities. They're just in survival mode. So for us to stop judging different types of women based on you know them being drug addicts or out on the streets and things like that, and to have more mercy and to see God, to see God is in all women. Because they're in trapped the in the in the in the part of the femininity that they could get access to to survive. And we, a lot of us, have been trapped yeah. in these in these aspects. Having to, you know, be in the opposite extreme of women that I've met that are completely rigid, have no contact with their bodies in a sexual way. They don't know how to express it in a healthy way. And they suffer. We have to show more kindness and love to ourselves. We have to. Absolutely. And and just femininity and all its different expressions in different aspects of life with non-judgment. Like, oh, I, I bow to my sister over there. I yes. bow to, because when we bow to, you know, the divinity in us, we're able to bow to others and not feel like it takes something away from us to, you know, give just due to those who may be an unaware goddess. Yes. So, to not go into judgment mode, you know, because we learn something, but to give back when we can to those that will listen. And stop competing. 
Yes. And that that's for women who are married, mm -hmm. looking down on women that are not. That's yes. single women. That's the other woman. Like, we have to stop that. Yes. We, oh, we, we, <laughs> um, even marriage has its challenges. So, yes, um, it does. You want something and then you're getting this like, oh, my God. Oh. Every woman is going through something. No matter whether she's in the penthouse or the, or the crack house, every woman is going through something. Um, we, we always talk about we manifest these things that we want. I want this or that. Once you get it, it's like, oh, wait a minute. My hole still isn't filled. I still got this hole inside of me. So working on feeling whatever hole that we have there is going to be very, very important as well. Can, can you briefly speak about the mother wound, please? <laughs> oh, um, the mother wound, <laughs> it can go, it can deal with the mother not being there. It can deal with abandonment. It can deal with um, it can deal with there are certain people that have been molested and the mother yes. just let it happen because she wanted the boyfriend or she needed that relationship and yes. the woman was not able to speak her truth. Women are going through this. Women are being silenced. Mm. Women have gone through all types of violations from different people, even in clergy and the yes. Ibas and the pastors and all these different people, and they're not able to speak their truth. They're they're sweeping under the rug to protect the family, or so that things won't be uprooted. And there's Our a fourth need. chakra, yes, yes, it's been shut down. There's a yes. need to speak the truth to somebody with tact. It may not be to the people mm -hmm. that won't listen. It may like it may be kind of speaking to a brick wall, but find somebody that will listen. Find a support group. And if, if ever you are, I'm speaking to the audience, if there's a need for healing or talking to a therapist, go to one that's been through some things, not someone who's just sitting there taking notes, but someone who can relate. Nothing yes. is more important than finding someone, somebody you can relate to. Absolutely. Those different things. Absolutely. Yes. And the space and the importance. And I think that you've experienced this. I definitely am now mm -hmm. understanding the importance and the role of the spiritualist, of the the priestess, of the the the, the great mother to hold Absolutely. space and to educate, we have to put our egos aside. Yes. To Absolutely. say, hey, I don't really know. I want to be in touch with my womb. I want to be able to communicate with my ancestors. I want to listen to my intuition, but mm -hmm. I don't know how. And can you speak to the importance of us aunties, which I like the term. A lot of people don't. I like it. What can we aunties do to be more supportive to our younger women? Once again, non-judgment. Like, oh, God, what are they listening to? What are, you know, <laughs> non-judgment. Um, being a listening ear. Uh, keeping their secrets. A lot of times, people keeping their secrets, and they and they uh they share it with other people, and that's not that's not fair. It's not ethical because we have to realize too that the ancient sibyls and the prophetesses and priestesses they were the psychologists of those time periods. Because psyche means talk soul, about it, talk about it. They were the first doctors, the first healers, and people had to confide in them things they could not tell anyone else that they would have taken to the grave with family and other people. So we have to learn to listen, allow people and not just talk and tell them what they should do, but give them suggestions and give and allow their free will to set in what they're ready to do and give people time to do it. It may not, they may not take your the advice may not sink in the seed that you plant. It may take five years for that seed yes. to sprout. So be yes. patient with people um, when they're serious. Um, being a listening ear and advocate for mental health and emotional health. People tend to talk just about the mental health, but this here, the heart health, the, the state of the heart, the emotions is very important too. So allowing people to speak their truth in general. Oh, I, I don't want to keep you. I don't know how much time you have. I'm just giving you it because I know you can't see on your side. We're at just about an hour. I don't know if you need to wrap up. If you do, then, you know, take the floor. If not, then I have more questions. So you let me know. I can take a, I can take a couple more questions. Okay. Let me see if anyone has a question that they would like to ask. Um, I'll take three. Um, you put it in the question box because um, we want to be respectful of her time. But please put it in the question box. I'll give you a second. Oh, some showed up. I knew it. <laughs> 
Ooh, beautiful question. Cece's Beauty says, how do we help our men tap into their feminine side along with balancing their masculine? Um, well, once again, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Help. Help our men. Help our men. Uh-huh. Talk about when it. When they want to balance themselves, they will. There is a need for them to listen to their intuition and look into their moon sign to discover their own relationship with their own mother and their intuitive gifts. That's how they can look at their uh, at their birth chart if they know their time and place of birth or, or kind of a, a guesstimate of the time period of birth, time of day. Um, not doing everything for them, allowing them to do certain things themselves and to kind of wait to see, observing more than telling them or suggesting to them. Just wait and see what he does. Because if he wants mm. to do it, it's not a matter of them... Um, it's not really about tapping into feminine energy. That's cool because they have their feminine side too. You know, they have the XY chromosome, but it's a matter of allowing them to show up as how they want to show up. Rather than this is so important pain. because this is the way in which that we are constantly trying to exert control. Mm -hmm. And really, when you remove yourself from it, you have to look at them for what they actually are. Absolutely. Right? And, and that's hard. Yes. Share. Finding some girlfriends to talk to because sometimes we want, you know, husbands and boyfriends and stuff to, oh, I just, can I just cry on your shoulder? This and that. Sometimes that takes a, uh, you need a sister. Women of old, they had a, a community of women that they went to to cry on and tell them everything. You don't have to tell a man everything. Listen. Say for your sisters. And to, be secrets. and to be real, I just recently, and this might, you know, you might be like, what? I have been looking for either an LA to join or some type of spiritual guidance and nothing really clicked. And I just recently got a godmother. When I tell you, like the place that that holds of being able to have access to a woman who understands Mm -hmm. And who has wisdom to guide? Life changing. Life changing. But Absolutely life changing. Life -changing. Everybody needs their own personal Iyanla. Everybody. <laughs> if, if if sometimes it's hard to find, you know, without shelling out three hundred dollars for a session or this and that. But if you can find <laughs> somebody who's like your own personal Iyanla, even if it's just subscribing to a channel and just going to that channel, that person may not even know they're talking to you. You got, you got to do it how you can. Sometimes that's, people can't afford therapy. That's the only thing they can do is just look at a YouTube video. Yes, you know, you're absolutely you right. Get it where you'd like to get it. And go to your ORE and ask them to put the right teachers and the right mentors and the right sister friends in your path that can go the distance with you in the season in your life. That's okay, this will be the last question with you. And then um, I believe I have someone who's willing to come on after you because I know you have to go. This is so amazing. So this question is, how do you feel about cutting your mother off to heal codependency? Um, it depends on how bad the damage is, but I wouldn't totally like cut off our distance. I distance. Would I would make myself accessible in doses. If I don't feel like picking up the phone, I would um, I would honor that feeling. If I feel drained after I talk to her, but distance or say, okay, I'm gonna give myself 20 minutes to hear whatever she's got to say. Or, because in my tradition, your isheshe, which is tradition, it means your, your tradition is your mother and your father. So honoring them is, is just as important as ancestors, even if they're negative, because that's still where you came from, that's the source. So there's sometimes there's a need to respect them or to honor them from a distance, but yeah. honoring them and respecting your parents and elders should not mean disrespecting yourself. So a lot of people think, oh, I've got to just, just kind of curl up into a ball and be a victim so I can respect them. No, you still... talk to her for this month or I'm going to wait. I'll give it six months. Let me see if she comes around because the parent needs to respect you as well. The child. The person that's the question. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thank you. Child. That was a beautiful yeah. answer. If you don't mind, um, can you give us your cash app so I can also pin that? Um, oh. I'm really, 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 because people are asking. Oh, oh thank you. One more thing, too. I know I'm blabbing, but I'm getting ready to go. No, go ahead. No. Yeah. <laughs> One second. 
Hold on, I, I, let me show this first. Okay, so there's two channels that I want you all to check out based on the Sybils, and that's Divine Beingness. Divine that's Beingness. Energy. Mm -hmm. And also a woman by the, name of, by the name of Amy M, as in Mary. Amy, Amy M. M. Are they she both on YouTube or are they yes. on Instagram? Okay. Yes, they're on YouTube. Just Google Amy M. Sybils and her information will come up. Okay. All of this, you guys, I will put when I post the video. So don't worry. The All of it I will post. Um, do you have your cash app for the people that are asking? Yes, I'm typing it right now. Okay, okay great. You. And then I will post there it. I will. Let me see. Yes, I'm going to put okay. that. And then once again, Amy M. Sybils on YouTube and Divine Beingness. Those are Divine two good channels Beingness. to check out. The Sybils Oraculum. This is a Sybils uh, kind of oracle deck, which is good to have if you're able to get your hands on it. And yes, thank you. Thank you for bringing me on. I appreciated this so much. If you are ever available to do this again, please let me know. You guys go over to her IG. She has a link. She's got links to her website. She's got classes and books and all kinds of things to help you with your path. Thank you so much for those of you that don't know me. Thank you for coming over and um, participating in this. Um, this has been an absolutely amazing. I'll be sending you over a love gift as well. Thank you so much, Aww. Adonola. Thank you. And uh, I have an Ori workshop coming up on December 20th, all about mental wellness and tapping into your own your for manifestation and mental wellness. That's coming on December 20th. I'll put the link in my bio probably next week. Once I have Thank you so, so much. I'm going to send you an sure. email after this. This was amazing. You have a really Thank good you. rest of your evening. You too. Be sure to save the link so I can watch it. I'm later. going to. I'm actually going to, yeah, I'm going to keep all of this. Don't even worry about it. I'll be on a little bit after, but uh, I will definitely send it to you so you can put it on YouTube.